object for you. Yes, it is the Sorrel or Sorrel, S-O-R-R-E-L. I've been working on it from my Katie Did's bag, which has Farida on it. This is a very Vogue finished object because I believe this sweater was debuted the week of Vogue and I loved the original version so much. It was the original version that was in all of the photos that I was seeing. There was a green one and then there was like kind of a maybe grayish purple one. It's from Wool and Pine, which is Dank Fiber and Abby Knits together. I guess they did it together. And her version, there's a like a green one and it looks like kind of a grayish purple one. And I know that the green one was done with Spun Right Round yarn. So I went straight to the Spun Right Round booth at Vogue, VKL. And Renee, who dyes the yarn, she helped me pick out a Sorrel. Now, this sweater is knit with a fingering weight and a mohair held together so that the appearance of the sweater is one color, but there's some fun happening behind the scenes. So when I went to Spun Right Round, I was immediately attracted to this color that was kind of a chartreuse. It reminded me, I think it was called Buggy, and it did remind me of like a firefly that's been squashed kind of color. And then I was, I picked out these, it's like a fade that you pick out underneath it. But if you were to go to the Dank Fiber Instagram page, you can see the four colors that she used underneath this green mohair, it blows your mind that it turns out to be the sweater that you see. It's just this crazy trick of the mind. So when I was there at the Spun Right Round booth, I picked out four colors and I was like, is this gonna fade, is this gonna work? And Yes, they said yes. So I swatched it up and it totally did. And it was amazing and beautiful. And seeing all of the different indie dye colors pop through the mohair was such a fun artistic experience. And I loved the swatch so much. In fact, I swatched it with the four original colors that I purchased there at Spun Right Round. And then I did another version of the swatch with two other sock yarns from my stash that I thought might bring more pink into it. And the other fun thing about it is that it's inside out. So as you're knitting it in stockinette, you, you go, oh, you can kind of see the breaks in this fade and then you flip it over and it's like you can't see the breaks anymore. So after doing that and experimenting with it, I thought, you know, I think I really do want a pink version of this or a purpley version of this. Even though I'm loving this swatch so much, I want to knit this in my signature color. So I ended up selling off that yarn to another lucky Sorrel person. I hope they're actually knitting a Sorrel with that. That would be amazing. And I picked out some new yarn. So this ends up being Hedgehog in the mohair. I got all of my yarn on Yarn Scout. Now I have to say I love Yarn Scout. They have really, really great customer service and they're very fast in sending out the yarn. The photos are sometimes a little bit not as good as they could be. So I admit that sometimes I look for a photo of the color on a different website, but then sometimes I buy it on Yarn Scout. I'm just saying, I'm just being honest, because that's who I am. I purchased four skeins of yarn from them, hoping for the best, and I ended up using three of the four, because the fourth one, it didn't fade, it just stood out. It was like one of these things is not like the other. And so I don't, these tags have fallen out of their prospective um, colors, so I hope I don't get this wrong. I'm gonna, I'm gonna reverse the two, I think. One of these is Salt and one of them is Floyd. I feel like this one is Salt and this one is Floyd. So you can see that these don't really appear to be an amazing fade. I don't know, they do and they don't. I'll show you a photo of all of the colors opened up and you can see it a little bit better. This one I believe is called Panda. I think I already have this skein of yarn actually because I think this is the same one I want to use for that Monarch shawl that I have still not cast on from um, Lavanya Patricella. Yeah, this is called Panda. Okay, so we have Panda and Floyd and Salt or maybe Salt and Floyd. So these three ended up being my players and I thought, you know, I do think I have enough yarn to only choose three. The recommendation is four and there, there's a color blocking chart on how to fade four colors. But I've made so many fingering weight sweaters with just three skeins. I had a feeling I had enough, which of course I did. 
so I started with this one, then moved to this, to this. And what I like about it is that it gets blacker. So there's more black yarn. There's barely any. They're just tiny, tiny bits of black in this. Then this is kind of like half and half. And then this is like 75, 25 with the black. So I thought this was going to work out really well. And when I swatched it up, I was very happy. The fourth color I had chosen was just mainly hot pink and purple. So because it didn't incorporate the black at all, it just stood out, it didn't work. So here's my fade, it started light and went to dark. I'm very happy with how it faded. The only thing that got me was the pooling in one of my sleeves. This sleeve seems really good. I'm pretty happy with it, but this one really pooled a lot. It was really weird and I kept trying to start over in parts, but it just, in the end, I just said, it's gonna pull, it's indie dyed yarn, just go with it. Here are some comments on the pattern. Some people don't like how close it is to the neck. I actually like it. I think it's fun. It kind of gives it a mock turtleneck and that's the design. I think you can modify this and so many people are knitting this sweater that it might be worth looking into the hashtag Sorrel Sweater on Instagram and seeing what people are doing. I kept it as is. I believe I knit the small or the extra small. And because I had swatched, I felt really good about it. This dip stitch pattern gave me a lot of problems. I don't know why. Everyone else seems to be handling it so well. It's going great. It, it just flies off the needle. I had to frog back several times. One reason is they're evenly spaced and there's a part of the pattern where you do like two or three of the same thing. And I think I did one extra. So on my third dip, it was just one row lower than it should have been. And it was noticeable. I don't know if it would have been noticeable now in this state, but it was definitely noticeable at the time. So I tinked back so that I could get it right. And I'm really glad I did. The other thing about the dip stitch is you go and you dip on one side and you dip on the other side. And I kept forgetting to dip the second time, but the, okay thing about that is when you go around and realize you're missing a dip you can just add it then so don't don't freak out just add it then and it seems to work out there is a knit through the back pearl knit through the back loop of the pearl stitch and i have a friend who did not understand the function of that and she just eliminated it so i don't know if it's important or not, it is something that you have to pay attention to and do. And if that's bothering you, and bo bothering your flow, you could experiment with just purling and not doing purl through the back loop. I think its function is it makes the, the dip kind of pop out more. I think that's the reason for it, but I still don't know. And I'm very bad at knowing the why of knitting, as you probably know by now. If you've watched a lot of my videos, you know that I just kind of knit along, not really knowing what I'm doing most of the time. Another tip I want to give you is when you're fading the color, if you're doing it according to the chart, you really don't start fading until the dip sti stitches are over, which is actually nice. It kind of starts incorporating towards the end here, but it does start before the sleeve. So what I did is every time I switched colors, alternated colors, because there's like an alternating period before you're just knitting with the second color or the next color, I just put a marker every time. I introduced the new color when I was going switching back and forth so that when I did the sleeves I tried to match that so you can either move the marker onto the sleeve and then move that marker to this sleeve when you get to this sleeve or whatever you want to do I did I did that here and on the second transition as well so that I was evenly spaced between my sleeves and my sweater that's one tip I want to give you another thing that happened that I, I don't I don't know why this happened because it sometimes happened in some parts and not in the other. So I think this is a matter of color change technique and helical knitting. I think helical knitting is a thing. Let me know. I forgot that when I turn, so after you do the yoke, you turn it inside out so that you can just knit everything, which I really love because I don't like purling very much. But the problem is that as I was knitting and knitting and knitting, I forgot that I was working on the wrong side. So, when I turned it inside out, there were parts of my work that was a bit messy when it came to the color transitions because I forgot that I was knitting on the wrong side and not the right side. So that is another tip for you to remember you're working on the wrong side. And you can kind of see the seam where the color change was. It's right here. 
And I don't know what I did wrong. I don't know if that's just, I don't know what that is or if there's a way to avoid that. It's not gonna bother me because it's right here on the side. No one's gonna know, but I'm just letting you know if that would bother you to pay attention to that. As for the sleeve, I really like the length of mine. I think I just did it according to the pattern and it's a bit long and I love it. I also really enjoyed the fit and when I'm working with a super wash sweater and I love the fit as soon as it's done, I don't want to overblock it. I've made that mistake a few times where I've just blocked it, pinned it out, and then it's grown and I don't love the fit anymore. So I just did a steam block with the iron of this and I'm very happy with the fit and I just, I'm just, I love it. There are some short rows and I believe I got them in the right place. I think they're supposed to go in the back. I think so. And the only way I could tell is just kind of by looking at my knitting and I saw that the color pooled a little bit differently there in the back. So I just marked the back of the sweater with a little bow. I just put a little tiny yarn bow so I know this is the back when I put it on. So this is my Sorrel sweater and I'm, it was a very fun knit. It went very fast. I did it with some of my knitting friends and my knitting group and it's been really wonderful to see all of the different versions pop up. It's a wonderful stash buster, really. Go look at all of your sock yarn and put together different combinations because the mohair makes it all the same color and it would be really fun to experiment with a swatch. I, I really encourage you to stash dive for this because you're gonna find some really fun things. I love how this yellow pops out on one of the stitches. I think it's around there. I love that about this pattern. It's so fulfilling for that reason. Thank you so much as always for checking in here on Christy Glass Knits. I will link to Yarn Scout and the pattern down below and I'll see you next time. Bye.